This video is sponsored by Beducated, which is an online platform that has sex education courses and also sex education courses that are specifically designed for couples like sexual health essentials, sexual healing, tantric massage, oral sex, kinky sex, pegging, anything you can think of. I wouldn't think of myself as much of a sex expert, but I didn't think there'd be much improvement needed in terms of my sex life until I was on Beducated. And then I kind of realized that it's not so much about improving, but just like the knowledge and education that you do have that can significantly improve the relationship you have with yourself and also the perception you have of sex in general. I didn't receive much of a sex education from my school, so I thought that I would figure it out during my years of like trial and error. The internet is already teeming with so much inf misinformation, regardless of the detrimental effect the porn industry has on our perception of sex and the perception of ourselves like poor body image and how we see ourselves and the kind of roles we take from mirroring porn i know there is feminist porn and like a uh, positive porn out there but this is like the mainstream porn basically is what i'm talking about what i found particularly useful on educated was the course on sexual healing which i didn't think i needed until i actually did it and it gives you in-depth information on womb healing your boundaries, validation, and also gives you like a quick medita meditation at the, at the end. So I found a very healing kind of like, it was like a routine in my self care. And I never knew how much I needed that course because a lot of trauma is obviously stored in the body and nothing, uh, something like that can't be, sometimes in part particular situations you can't, talk it out or talk about the feeling it's kind of because it can be re-traumatizing so that's why i found that course particularly helpful for me because it's not something i would w w like need ter talking for but something that i just needed to heal within myself and within my body after i did the sexual healing course and what really grabbed my attention and intrigued me was the course on open relationships i haven't experienced one myself or been in one myself but i do have friends that are, are in one so i thought it would be interesting to see if the course like directly correlated with experiences that i've heard from my friends even though i haven't really asked them that many well for fear of being inappropriate i just haven't asked, asked them that many questions so i thought it'd be helpful for me to get myself a bit more educated on it so i can ask more uncomfortable questions so if this is of any interest to you and if you're interested in knowing more about open relationships and how people go about them i did all the dirty work after i did my course i created a list of questions that i was going to ask my friends and make them feel uncomfortable it was kind of like a mock therapy session for them i think they thanked me at the end because there it's questions they also needed to ask each other so but before we go into that you can get a one day free trial all access to any of the courses on the educated platform and you can also get 70% off a yearly pass on the Beducated platform using my coupon code Keelan, which will be, uh, and the link will be in the description as well. So let me know if you try it out and how you get on and what course was your favorite. I think I'll be doing a course on pegging next. What do we think? Keep you guys updated. So anyway, this is a quick little interview that I did with my friends Ritari and Eliza. I hope you enjoy. Testing. <laughs> Mic check. Kiss my lips to take mine off. <laughs> oh my god, it's a really good story. Yeah. I really enjoy telling people this because it's actually like an um, old fashioned way of meeting. Was it? I guess I remember. I, was I, like, like, no, I, I remember the story. I remember what it was. Was it old fashioned? Was that like a sexy getaway with a bunch yeah. of people there? Yeah, yeah. It just wasn't on an app, is what I mean by old fashioned. Oh, right, like yeah. it wasn't digital. Yeah. It was in real life. It was my birthday. Um, we were all going away to Airbnb. Um, to the countryside and I didn't actually know anyone yeah I was taken as a plus one with my friend Portia but it was your birthday wasn't it, it was my birthday so I kind of came on a bit of a whim and you drove us all there in your van mm -hmm. and that's where we met and um, so this was almost well over was a it year August or was it, it was July, July 31st okay. so it was almost a year ago now well, it was over a year ago that we've known each other I mean monogamy is like I mean it's a totally valid kind of like you know, means of expressing love to each other and stuff. But I guess it's just literally just having one partner, whether it be sexually or emotionally and, and stuff like that, to a certain degree, it's kind of like, what it looks like, I guess, is just kind of like the more traditional way that's kind of existed forever, where you, yeah. know, you seek out, like, a partner that you think might be the one, or whatever, and then you stick to that. But I guess the thing is, monogamy is supposed to be one partner at, at a time, right? Yes, so, I yes. So, in, in real life, what it actually looks like is serial monogamy, right? You go... From one like partner to another. Yeah, exactly. It's like whether it's every year or every three weeks. We've got friends that have new boyfriends and girlfriends every three to four yeah. months. They seem to think that that's more healthy than seeing multiple partners and putting less pressure on each other and, and, and you know. Yeah. So I'm guessing that's what it looks like in my mind. Yeah. Where it's just one at a time. Yeah, I, w I would say that too. I guess it's like more of a traditional, like conform conformist way of, yeah. of, of dating, of of being with of spending time with someone yeah 
and there's nothing wrong with it. But it's it's probably maybe a bit outdated. I think maybe there's there's nothing there's nothing wrong with the with the with the concept in general, but I think monogamous relationships can be just as toxic as yeah. polygamous relationships can be. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's all it's all to be dealt with yeah. on a case by case basis. I don't feel like I'm like an ev- evangelist for like for polygamy or for polyamory or anything like that. Definitely not. I just do what works for me. It's just kind of like yeah, it's like what's a relationship for? What did it mm. used to be for when monogamy mm. was made popular? What do you want your relationship to be for right now? Yeah. You know, more and more people are, like, focusing on careers or, or yeah. exploring a life where they don't necessarily want kids. People aren't necessarily marrying each other in order to gain, like, a foothold in their community or to, like, you yeah. know, pull their ranches and cows together anymore, like, <laughs> or to, like, you know, become a, a lord or lady. Do you think uh, the impacts of lockdown has, like, uh, influenced your decision and other options I would, I would, dating? I would say it's definitely accelerated... I feel like it's a bit like being in Love Island or Big Brother or anywhere where you're just like, con- where you're intensely in someone's space with no choice almost. Yeah. It's only, it kind of just speeds it up. I would say that's the only way it would have affected us. I feel like we probably would have ended up this way anyway. Yeah. And do you think you had the ideals of like uh, non traditional dating types prior to lockdown? Or do you think it's like you want to explore mm. more options now because you've seen how mm. like limiting yourself to just mm. one person? Mm. can be yeah in yeah. itself yeah. Anyway. I would say for me yeah this is new for me mm. um, I, I've i been single for like for four years I was single for six years and before that I just had like back to back boyfriends so this is new territory for me whereas it's something that you're quite adverse yeah. in anyway yeah it's kind of like it's something I mentioned at the very beginning I think like a lot of the time like no matter who I meet or who I'm like interested in I like to kind of like be upfront about it because mm. I think an open relationship is something that's really, really hard to get into from a mon- monogamous relationship. To make that transition is really difficult, especially because one person will have to dictate that that's what they want. The second person can take that any given way. Mm. So, um, I mean, I mentioned it kind of like already on the first night, like kind of yeah. how I am and how things have gone for me in the past. and Yeah, kind of like, So, but then I don't think, and the lockdown, so you were like this before the lockdown, whereas I'd say yeah. for me, it, it might have like, I don't know, because... I've always, in the back of my head, like, I've always known that, like, to be with one person is a lot, and is it realistic? Mm. So, meeting Ritari only just kind of, like, helped me, like, bring that, what I already kind of felt somewhere inside, mm. it kind of brought that out, and I don't know if the lockdown, like, it was a choice, anything to do with that, really, no. it was more just like, oh, this is the person that's going to help me mm. experience this new way of being, I yeah. think. Okay. Oh, we have rules. He he would love, like, I know... <laughs> <laughs> no, go, 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 go. <laughs> Like, um... We have rules. Like, I know Ritari would... He, you just don't want to talk about it. Whereas I'm a, I'm a talker. Okay, yeah. I, I'm an over-sharer and over-communicator. Mm. I grew up in a, a big, crazy family where, like, you told everyone everything. Like, all my sisters, mum and dad. Like, it was normal to, like, tell people anything. Whereas you're a bit more secretive and a bit, had a bit more of, like, a life where you weren't so open with, like, everything, right? Yeah. Would I you say? I think it's kind of, like, an age-old kind of, like, issue between boys and girls a lot of the time. But also, like, my, my, my upbringing and, and, like, my kind of, like, endeavour into, like, sexual maturity or whatever, by, from puberty onwards, I did, like, mostly on my own. I went to, like, boarding school and I moved in with a dad that I hadn't lived with since I was, like, four years old. Do you know what I mean? So there weren't really that many people to talk about it with. And so I'm used to dealing with things on my own and kind of, like, just following my my heart and just doing what mm. I feel like is right. I do definitely have stuff to work on kind of thing. Um, with regards to sharing, but I don't always see the point. He's a Sagittarius, I mean. which is like okay. Yeah. I'm a Leo. <laughs> oh, well, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. So does, uh, maybe that yeah. would make sense. Yeah. Maybe, maybe to the listeners. <laughs> like, <laughs> astro- like a Sagittarius is just they're like quite individual and solo in their expeditions. Whereas a Leo, I feel like it's more like oh, I just want you to feel like I do, and let's yeah. let's feel good together, and I want to tell you everything. Yeah, I mean, like with regards to like boundaries for yeah. me, I think like. A lot of the time it speaks for itself. You can feel it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think you should be responsible of maintaining the boundaries on, on your side and, like, have faith that the other person is doing the same on the other side. Yeah. So, but, I mean, I'm always open to, like, discussion. I'll try my best, do you know what I mean? But but it's, like, so at the, <laughs> at the same time, I feel like with regards to what's cheating and what's not... Yeah, yeah, I think, sorry, for went example, off tangent there. No, 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 I think, I think it was good that we kind of, like, laid the foundations there. But <laughs> yeah. with regards to, like, what's cheating and what's not, I feel like... I feel like you know when you're doing something a bit like uh, mm. out there. Do you yeah. know what I mean? There's a huge difference between yeah. 
like actively seeking to replace your partner without them knowing, trying yes. to find that overlap. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Getting emotionally um, engaged yeah. with someone to like a degree that you feel like, oh, fuck, what if this was happening to me? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then there's a difference between going out for the weekend yeah. and meeting someone and and having experience with them, for example, that might not last the next day or, or whatever, or even bringing in someone else into like your relationship at home, which can be fun. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. But I think Sorry. it's, um, I think it's very much, I think often it speaks for itself. And if you're like honest, then that's the case. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I think yeah. that's how kind of yeah. I feel about so for it. For me, I feel like cheating would be like a, an emotional, I feel like that's what I like mm. value in you the most is mm-hmm. like, we've got an emotional relationship. Yeah. And I would, yeah, I would, if I started to feel like that with someone else, then I would, it would feel a bit danger zony. Mm-hmm. Whereas like physical, fun, spontaneous, exciting things, not that you're not any of those things as mm-hmm. well. But I feel like that's, that's the, that's the line. Yeah. I think. I, I also yeah. feel like, for example, we've got loads of friends, for example, you know, sometimes you act, you act like a therapist for a friend. Sometimes the friend acts like a therapist for you. Like it's, it, it, it is like a kind of a bit of a gray area because at the same time, it's like. I was speaking to, like, a friend of mine the other day who's in, like, a success, su- successful open relationship. And he said that his rule was that nothing, when it gets emotional, don't do it. But the thing is, at the same time, I think I think I probably have, to a certain degree, an emotional connection with anyone that I would call my friend. You know what I mean? So it's a bit of a grey area, but, like, mm. I do really feel like you feel it. You know, you feel like... Mm. You, c- you can feel when you're doing something it's wrong. Intuitive, like, it's intuitively yeah, led. You, can, you, you have that kind of, like, moral compass. Like, everyone does where you know when to not go too deep um, yeah. and when to, you know, be yeah. open up with your partner about yeah. something yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah. What I, what I struggle with is, like, I might have done something and then I, like, I want to run home and be like, sorry, guess what I just did or something. And I have to, like, not do that because I know you like just to be like, let's not talk about it. No, but at the same time, it's like, I'm down for that. Like, okay. I, don't, I don't mind. Like, if yeah, you, I know, I'm like, oh. I don't mind. The thing is, I think that's another thing. I know you're going to ask us about this later. Like, you definitely are. But that's the thing about kind of like managing jealousy yeah. as well. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Because at the same time, like, if Eliza were to run home and be like, oh, I did this and it was fun last night, like, the fact that she's been open about it and had a good time, like, that's something that I would love to, like, share in. Mm. Okay. I well, think, that's good to hear. You know, I think, yeah, totally. I think it's more like, for example, if you've done something and you're almost like ashamed of it, then that's something mm. that that I would rather not hear and I'd rather mm. let you deal with mm. on your own and mm. get back to me when mm. you've figured it out. Mm. Do you get me? Mm. So what do you look for outside of your relationship with each other? Oh. So I, I really don't. I don't go looking. Like, Ritari, who I hate this, what I have to say, who's going to so, cringe yeah. inside. But, like, he really does give me, like, everything that I need. Like, he's oh super... God. He's super. And I look at his face. He's super fun. <laughs> And he's, like, caring. He, like, I wouldn't... I don't need to go and do anything. However, like, if I had to, if I am looking for something outside of him, then it, it really would just be something fun. Just and a massive dick. <laughs> so fair. <laughs> I would never go seeking, looking. It would never just be like, oh, I'm going to go and look for something. It would just be like if it happened in the moment. Because I, I really have everything that I need, like, with him. So I'm not, I'm not actively, like, looking for anything apart from just fun, spontaneous, other kinds of excitement. That's cute. Aww. Aww. <laughs> I think the main thing is that I don't go look at I don't see kind of finale. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like mm. stuff happens, you know what I mean? It might might last a week, might last the night, might whatever, do you know what I mean? And a lot of the time I also find that after kind of like an initial kind of like sexual experience with someone, like you do get kind of close to them and then it will then often evolve into something more platonic. And so I you know, I, I make friends that way, I think a lot of the time as well. I think mm. it's like just like a way that um that I make friends, but yeah, I mean I don't go looking for anything. I'm not. I'm never out on the pool. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Which I guess is like maybe the difference between someone that's like single and someone that's in this situation. Yeah. How do you deal with jealousy then if it arises? <sighs> like, out of the scale of like zero jealousy to like jealous monster, I I'm definitely I would say like low to medium. So it's something I do have to work on. Mm. Like naturally, I would be like, oh how oh I'm jealous. Like why would you not want to do that with me tonight? Kind of thing. So it's something I have to work on internally and and also like I do know like I'm quite philosophical about humans in general like I know people are just going to do things and it isn't always about it's, you don't have to take it personally so it's something I'm getting better at I don't think like we have massive fights there's definitely hiccups we have where I can be upset and but I don't I do think 
I do think generally I'm okay, like with jealousy. I'm not I'm not mad jealous to yeah. begin with, which I think. I mean, helps. if you are, you definitely internalize it. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think you are, but like if yeah. you were, then it's not something that you kind of like wear on your sleeve, like. Ah, yeah. No, I hate never, that person. Yeah. Or this person, like, no, it would never be like that. I'm always very like accepting. Like I get it. Really, I get it. Like if you're with mm. whoever the fuck doing that, like I kind of just get it. I'm not. There will be there will be a bit of me that's like, oh, that hurts a bit. I'm jealous, but I think it's normal. I think it's normal to feel jealous. I think it's slightly robotic and a little bit odd if you weren't which I f- I'm basically just not <laughs> yeah yeah. I, and it sometimes like worries me because I just think like well that's strange does it mean you don't care at all mm. like do you know what you mean I think what it is is that like I think it might just be because I'm a bit more experienced in this kind of like way of life than you are yeah it's just like I think a lot of the time when I felt jealous in the past it's because I honestly felt like I was being replaced do you know what I mean mm. When you get yeah. kind of like feedback time and time again that you're still there and you still mean the same sort I need, of person, I need feedback. Then, yeah. then kind of like, then I think that should that makes it kind of like subside a bit. Yeah. And I think a lot of the time you have to ask yourself like, like being jealous isn't like we we know this right. Being jealous isn't always a response that's caused by someone else doing you wrong. Like it, it's literally just an emotion that you have to learn to process to a certain degree. I think so. Um, once you get to a point where you can kind of like process process that emotion and see it for what it is mm. as a response to the mm. unknown, mm. if you know what mm. I mean, and not necessarily always a response to have been done wrong. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. I mean, there's plenty of relationships and stuff where someone will be at a party just like an inch too close to another girl or an inch too close to another boy or checking texts on someone's phone like without good reason or if there's only ever a good reason for that. Like, those generous mm. responses are toxic, so we have to be kind of, like, aware of the fact that yeah. a, res- a, a, a response in the, in the form of jealousy can be totally your own fault or totally the other person's mm. fault. Mm. And you have to kind of, like, on a case-by-case basis, mm. kind of, like, try and figure out where on the spectrum mm. your response lies and whether it's mm. actually warranted, you mm. know? Mm. Yeah, and I think there's, like, a certain ex- amount of aftercare, like, one needs, like... F- to deal with jealousy and I like what you just said like I do I do would need like reassuring not not daily or anything and not in any crazy gesture but I definitely do need to be told every now and mm. then like oh you're still this person to me and I love and respect you and yeah. and then I'm fine I feel like once I get I once I get just sort of like stroked a little bit like slightly then I I'm I'm okay again it's just when when the communication if it ever disappears I guess that's when the jealousy does come out I think you just... I need to be, like, yeah. affirmed. Is that the word? Yeah, I get that. Affirmations. Yeah. Affirmations. Sometimes. Not a lot. Not over the top. Just sometimes. What advice would you give for couples that want to try consensual non-monogamy? Communication. And be mm-hmm. ethical and respectful and considerate. And have a good friendship under it all. I would say you need a good friendship. It can't yeah. just be built on sex. No. I think also from... I think try and, like, lock it in. Lock in the boundaries mm. from the very beginning, or yeah, as early as possible. Yeah, it's a good idea, actually. Like, just from experience, I know, like, mm. people can also like you so much that they're willing to try anything, but it's not the best thing mm. for them. Like, make sure there's someone that's on your level mm. that feels a similar way. And, like, if you have any kind of inkling that someone isn't... Because that's the thing with consent, isn't it? Like, we've seen a lot of, about this, about, like, consent can't just be, like, a like a begrudging type mm. thing. Like, oh, I don't want to leave you, so I'll try it. Or I don't want to upset you, so I'll try it. Or like, no, 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 yes. Do you know what I mean? So like, when it comes to mm. consensual um, polygamous or, or polyamorous relationships, just make sure that it's actually like willing consent. I think. Yeah. And like, get it in there early. Don't like yeah. change the rules after a few months. It's not going to fucking no. work. Like. No, but then also, if one person's new to it, like me, like just be understanding, and patient. Be patient. I think because there's yeah. going to be times where you might be like horrified, like, oh my god, you you have sex with someone else, mm-hmm. and you just need to just be patient and like help that person through yeah you know and I think it's also good to like allow a, a grace period of mono- monogamy do you know I mean especially if like one person is new to it yeah like, I think it's good to like allow like a grace period I don't think it should be yeah. like boom alright so we're boyfriend girlfriend now okay well bye I'm gonna go sleep with this person tonight do you know what I mean like yeah wait until you're both totally comfortable with it discuss yeah. it yeah yeah again, again like how you said earlier about being like intuitive about these things yeah. it's, it's, it's like intuitive yeah you should know which nights to like stay in like which yeah. nights to like go out and yeah. when to do certain things depending on how things are at home do you know what I mean yeah yeah I feel like you always have to have like a yeah get a good foundation in there I would say yeah Mm. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. That was so nice. Oh, Lord.